Okay, hot shots, grab your disc man, get your grunge on, strap in, and get ready. We're dropping the hammer. No, you're not. And revving it up to the most popular era for stock car racing. It's the 90s, and we're set for qualifying for the 90s stock car tournament. Once again, I'm your host, Funk Hauser, as we welcome you back to the old Yakin Valley Speedway, home to the Winston Salem Racing Series and the Funk Hauser Diecast Racing League. We got 32 cars lined up and ready to go, broken up into two categories, early 90s and late 90s. So that's 1990 through 1994 and 95 to 99. Only 16, though, will make it into the tournament. So let's get ready for the introductions of the first qualifying groups of the 90s stock car tournament. Up first, we have Joe Martin in the number 17 1991 Chevy Lumina by Racing Champion. After him, we have Mike Reed in the number 18 1990 Chevy Lumina by Matchbox. After him, we have Chris Topher in the number one 1994 Chevy Lumina. And then following at the end, we have Tom Ato in the number 42 1992 Pontiac Grand Prix. We got three Chevy Luminas and a Pontiac Grand Prix starting us off for race one of the qualifying rounds. Now, as we get ready for race one, Joe Martin's going to be leading us off of the inside front lane. Right next to him will be Mike Reed on the outside lane with Chris Topher and Tom Ato bringing up the rear as we get ready for race one is underway. As we head down the backstretch, Joe Martin and Chris Topher are taking a nice lead over Mike Reed and Tom Ato. Heading into turn two through the chicane, it's still all Joe Martin. And to turn three, does Chris Topher have anything for Joe Martin? Is he slowly catching up to him? Can he make the pass? No, it's going to be Joe Martin going to be winning this race, followed by Chris Topher. And it looks like Mike Reed and Tom Ato have gotten into some kind of trouble into turn three. Let's check out the replay cam and figure out just what happened to these two. As we check out the replay cam, Joe Martin and Chris Topher fighting for their positions. They come in nice and smooth, smooth exits, but Tom Ado comes in and he just rolls over. And it looks like Mike Reed was paying attention too much to his rearview mirror. He oversteers and just spins around with no problems whatsoever. He should have been able to make it to the finish line. After the first race, checking out the leaderboard, Joe Martin's going to be leading us with five points, and then right behind us is going to be Chris Topher with four. Looks like Mike Reed and Tom Ado both have a DNF, but they're in the front row here, starting us off with race two. Let's see if they can get back into this competition. It's a tight race down the back stretch as Mike Reed has a slight lead of the other drivers, but here comes Chris Topher pushing Tom Ado to the lead. Topher gives Ado a push as he gets underneath him. They get together, they get swirly. Here he comes one more time. Oh, what a wreck as Tom Ado hits hard. Chris Topher's gonna be your winner, followed by Joe Martin, and Mike Reed's gonna come in backwards. Checking in Tom Ado, he hit the tire barrier right there at the entrance of pit lane, and that is where he sits. Let's check out the replay and figure out exactly what just happened. Great fighting for position as we come out of the chicane. Chris Topher just pushes Tom Ado to the side. He gets alongside of him, up underneath him, going into turn three. They get loose right there, coming out of the turn, almost coming into a wreck and to a stop, but they're able to break free, and Tom Ado starts to catch back up to him, making a pass up underneath him, but Chris Topher says, nope, shuts the door, gets him loose, and he slams right into the tire barrier. As we watch that beautiful overtake from turn three, let's figure out what happens to the other two drivers as Mike Reed enters the turn, seems to have no problems, but he gets loose once again, coming out of the turn. Joe Martin sees it, he slams on the brakes, but Joe Martin is able to get past him. He takes that third place position, and Mike Reed is going to have to finish the race backwards. After two races, Joe Martin and Chris Topher are going to be tied with first place for nine points. Mike Reed's going to be sitting there six points behind him with three. Tom Ado has got zero points. Let's see if anything can happen here as race three is underway. Down to the backstretch, Tom Ado has a slight lead, but he's got Chris Topher right there beside him as Chris Topher takes a lead from him, headed into turn two through the chicane. Chris Topher is just taking off. He is gone as Tom Ado is trying to catch up to him, but he's got nothing for him. And it's going to be Chris Topher followed by Tom Ado, Joe Martin, and Mike Reed. After three races, Chris Topher is going to be leading us with 14 points. Right behind him is going to be Joe Martin with 12 points. So they're going to be moving on to the next round. Unfortunately, Mike Reed and Tom Ado are too far behind. They are mathematically out of it. We still have one race to go as we are underway. Down the back stretch, it's Topher and Martin as we head into turn one. And Topher takes a nice lead. He goes into turn two by himself through the chicane. He is all alone as we head into turn three. He says bye-bye. Oh, he gets loose. He gets slowed down. Oh, he is really slowed down. He is might cause some damage to his car as he limps across the line. And then here comes Mike Reed all by himself. 
We got the emergency crews out and checking in on Tom Edo and Joe Martin. As it looks like Tom Edo got turned upside down and then struck by Joe Martin. Let's check out the replay and figure out exactly what happened. As we check out the turn three camera, Chris Topher comes in by himself and looks like Tom Edo gets turned upside down and then bam, he gets struck hard by Joe Martin as they come to a halt right there at the exit of the turn three. Mike Reed comes around, he sees him, he slams on the brakes, but he hits Joe Martin and continues on. After four races of the first group of qualifiers, Chris Topher and Joe Martin are going to be moving on to the first round of competition of the 90 Stock Car Tournament. It's Funkhauser coming at you from the infield of what is starting to be called Treacherous Turn 3. We have had a ton of action here and it's beginning to get the reputation as the turn too tough to tame. Let's see how the next group of drivers handles it as we get set for introductions for qualifying Group 2. Starting us off with Heat Group 2, we have Roger Clayton in the number 8, 1997 Ford Thunderbird by Hot Wheels. Following up behind him, we have Harley Johnson in the number 26, 1998 Ford Taurus, also by Hot Wheels. Coming up, we have Todd Allen in the number 97, 1997 Ford Thunderbird, also by Hot Wheels. And then finally, we get Kurt Smith in the number 16, 1997 Ford Thunderbird. Three Thunderbirds and a four Taurus starting us off with qualifying group two. Starting us off in race one, Roger Clayton's going to take that front inside lane. Right next to him is going to be Harley Johnson. And on the back row, we're going to have Todd Allen on the inside and then Kurt Smith right beside him as race one is now underway. Now in the back stretch, Roger Clayton has a slight lead over the other drivers in through turn one as Johnson slowly catches up to them in the turn two through the chicane. Johnson is taking the lead. The other drivers are right on the tail. They're beating, they're tapping. Everybody's fighting for position. Who's going to get it? It's going to be Harley Johnson coming in first place. Some tight, fast racing by those Fords. Checking out the leaderboard, Harley Johnson is going to be leading us with five points, and then right behind him is going to be Kurt Smith with four points. You got Roger Clayton in there with three points, and then Todd Allen's bringing up the rear with two. We got a lot of racing to go as race two is underway. It's a tight race down the back stretch as Kurt Smith and Harley Johnson fighting for position, and Kurt Smith takes a lead away from him. Here comes Todd Allen right behind him. Can he the chicane into turn three? Can Todd Allen catch up to Kurt Smith? Kurt Smith gets loose. Here comes Todd Allen, but no, Kurt Smith is going to be your winner, followed by Todd Allen, Roger Clayton, and it looks like Harley Johnson has had some trouble. Harley Johnson took one heck of a ride as he entered into the chicane. He's been taken out of the vehicle, heading to the infield care center, what a heck of a hit. We have got to check out the replay and figure out what just happened to him. Looking at the top left-hand corner of your screen, you can see the cars as they enter in the turn two. Harley Johnson starts to enter the chicane, gets loose, but he gets slammed by Roger Clayton, thrown up and over, almost falling over the edge of the canyon. Luckily, he landed in the brush and got stopped. Even after taking that hard hit, Harley Johnson says he is not giving up. He is back up in the lineup. Kurt Smith is our new leader with nine points as we have a tie for second place. Todd Allen and Kurt Smith are up front as race three is underway. Down the back stretch, Kurt Smith has a slight lead over the other drivers as Todd Allen slowly starts to fall behind. Kurt Smith goes to the chicane, keeps pulling away. Can Todd Allen get caught up to him as Kurt Smith gets loose? Here comes Todd Allen. He makes the pass for the win. What a move by Todd Allen to win the race, but it looks like we had a rollover by Harley Johnson checking out the replay. As you watch the battle for the lead, Kurt Smith gets loose and Todd Allen takes advantage of it coming through. And then Harley Johnson in the background, he just gets rolled over at the entrance of pit lane. Another rollover by Harley Johnson as the crews are checking in on him. That first wreck may have really messed with him. Checking out the leaderboard, Kurt Smith is still leading us with 13 points. And right behind him is Todd Allen, two points behind him. But don't count out Roger Clayton. He's also sitting there with nine points as we get ready for race four. Down the back stretch, Todd Allen has a nice lead over the other drivers, and Kurt Smith is right behind him, giving him a shove into turn two, through the chicane, heading into turn three. Todd Allen goes high, but Kurt Smith goes low. He makes a pass. It's going to be Kurt Smith. Oh, he gets loose. He gets rolled over. Oh, my Lord. He just got slammed hard by Roger Clayton. What a hit, and what a finish. My Lord, the crews have got to get out there and check up on Kurt Smith. As we watch him exit turn four, he oversteers. He hits the wall, rides it, and then Todd Allen gets a hit. He makes the pass, and then here comes Roger Clayton with nowhere to go. He slams into the driver's side of that car, flips him up and around. My Lord, what a hit. The crews are checking in on Kurt Smith. They say he is okay. The driver's net is down, and he is talking to the emergency crews. But as we were watching him, we did not realize that Harley Johnson also got into the trouble. He is sitting down there at the entrance of turn four, and it has just not been his day. 
I've been told we have another angle of the replay. As we watch it here, you can see Kurt Smith entering the turn four. He oversteers, hits the wall, rides it up. Todd Allen makes up evasive maneuvers. He makes it around Kurt Smith, and then bam! Here comes Roger Clayton, slams right into him, spins him around as Kurt Smith comes to a halt. Checking out the final scores, Todd Allen is going to be your winner with 16 points. But Kurt Smith and Roger Clayton are tied for 13 points. So what does that mean? We have a showdown! I tell you, I am surprised at Kurt Smith as he is going to be continuing on to this race. He is going to be right there next to Roger Clayton. Roger Clayton, due to having a better average finish, he is going to be starting off in that front inside lane as this showdown is underway. Roger Clayton taking an advantage of that inside lane. He has a slight lead over Kurt Smith as we head down to turn two. Here comes Kurt Smith. He takes the lead through the chicane. Can Roger Clayton catch back up to them? They touch. They get loose. Here they come down to the finish. Who's it going to be? It's going to be Kurt Smith for the win. What great action we've had here today, and this is just the qualifying rounds for the 90s Stock Car Tournament. Stick around, and if you like what you see, remember, please, like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell as we bring you more action here at the old Yakin Valley Speedway, home to the Winston-Salem Racing Series and the Funkhauser Diecast Racing League. Stay tuned for more of the qualifying rounds. You've been watching the Funkhauser Diecast Racing League. Stay tuned for more racing action.